Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to TEDx Dupree Park. We actually have a little bit of stream in music. I'm going to play that. I hope you can hear it. Let me know in the comments below if you can hear us, if you can hear me, if you can hear the music, and where you're coming in from today. Let's get some energy going for this. And if you guys could share our event today, press the little share button underneath the event. That would be great. I'm not seeing anybody commenting yet, but maybe I'm not looking in the right spot. Let me just do a little refresh here on the page. Okay, I think we're rocking and rolling. Thank you guys so much. So we'd love some likes and some shares. Say hello. Let me know where you're coming in from. All righty. Very good. Okay, thanks a bunch. Well, we have a wonderful show in store for you today. All kinds of great inspiration and wonderful things to learn about. To, to get it started, let me bring on the organizer for TEDx Dupree Park, the man who's behind the whole thing. The whole reason that it's happening is because he took the initiative and said, TEDx, I'd like to do a TEDx in Woodstock, Georgia, and we're going to talk about seeding greatness. So with that, let me bring on Steve Monahan. Hello, Steve. How are you doing today? Hey, Gina. How are you? I am doing just wonderfully. So good that you're here. And are you excited? Are you as excited as I am about all the wonderful guests we have today? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, you've really got a, a nice lineup. We've got so many to pick from. I mean, that's that's the amazing thing with 20 speakers, 20 coaches that are actually speakers themselves and our team and our sponsors. So uh, we've got enough for the next uh, six months. Absolutely. Yes. And I'm having a lot of people contact me and say, hey, I'd like to be on the show, too. So I think we're going to have a lot of guests, a lot of amazing guests, because we had about 200 people apply to be speakers for us. And they were all amazing. And we couldn't work them all into a single day. So now through TEDx to Park TV, we're going to be able to bring a lot of those folks in. So if you're watching right now and you had applied, touch base with me again, because we'll start working you back into the schedule for the for the Dupree Park TV show. Of course, we're going to get our speakers on here first, but you, there's going to, there's, we're going to probably do this on a regular basis because we're excited about the opportunity to really share this message of seeding greatness throughout the world on a global basis, which is even more than what we could have done in our one day event, which would have been happening today. Steve, how did you feel yeah, this morning when you woke up and you knew that this would have been our big day? I know when I saw the 15th, I saw it yesterday when the 14th and we were supposed to be doing our rehearsals. Um, it was just kind of sad. I mean, you know, it, you know, so, but I'm stoic. I moved on. We're moving on. You know, that's what you got to do. We are. And so we're doing a TV show instead and we're sharing yeah. information around the world. Yeah. So you know, as we talked about, there, there's really, it was almost like a do over for us. And I stepped back and said, you know, I loved what we were doing, but now we got this up. How can we even do better? And all these ideas came up with it and you came out with the TV and we said we wanted to reach more people in our community. So that's what's happening. Something good always pops out of something. Yeah. I know. I love your optimistic attitude. That's part of what's drawn us together all these years. Mm -hmm. So, Steve, I know that you had a little story, a little idea that you wanted to share with us today. So I'm going to try. I'm going to make a switch here, see if I can put you on feature. And okay. um, please, please share. OK. Um, I wanted to share a story, some people may have heard it, of the two wolves. And um, it's about fear and hope, which is where we are really as people right now. There's a lot of fear on one side and there's hope on the other. I personally tend to believe something good is coming from this. Something good has already come from it. People are spending more time with their families. They're starting to figure out what their priorities are. And when we put this thing back together, I think there will be changes, positive changes. It's like rebooting a computer. We've had this opportunity to get ourselves rebooted. So I'm hopeful. I'm not naive, but you know, I, I, I tend to be hopeful. Uh, the one thing I want to share about was the uh, two wolves. Um, one evening, uh, the chief of the Cherokee Indians, and they used to be right in this area, uh, brave. He told his grandson about a battle that goes on in each human between fear and hope. And that uh, 
we have to decide which one is going to rule our lives because what we think we become. And so there was the two wolves. One was full of fear, one full of lies and greed. The other was always full of hope and peace and love. And the grandson looked at him and thought for a minute and he said, which one wins? And the grandfather said, whichever one you feed. And I, I really think that was a, it was what I chose for today because I think that's the metaphor. What do we want to feed? What news stations do we want to watch? Do we even want to watch them? What are the good things that we want? If we could do this all over again, what do we want to do in our lives? So we can either succumb to the fear and the lies and the greed that are going on. But at the same time, there's so much hope and peace and love going on. So which one do we choose? And I ask everybody that's listening, which one are you going to choose? Which wolf will you feed? And that was the story I wanted to share. Excellent. I love that story. It's it's. Uh, I remember the first time I heard it and I thought, ooh, that's a good one. And so yeah. when I'm feeling fearful, which is not much, I really am not, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess I am. I'm fearful. And yet I'm such an optimist that I really, I don't, I'm not a worrier. That's what it is. I, I do get fearful sometimes, but I'm not a worrier. And good Lord, I've jumped out of planes. I've been scuba diving with sharks and uh, done all kinds of crazy, ridiculous things that I probably shouldn't have done, but I'm here to tell about it. And so I guess that's given me confidence that, yeah. that, uh, <laughs> that there's more to life to do. I've kind of been there with you, Gene. I've, I've never really been afraid I mean, well, of big things. Small things like standing in front of the screen, yeah, a little bit of prayer. But the big things, when I faced the death and went to the operation, didn't think I'd come out, I was very stoic about it. I mean, it's just strange. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're just all wired different. But that's why you have to be kind and listen to people because we all are wired different. What may not bother you could be just driving someone crazy. So we have to really, really... Uh, be conscious and compassionate for others in that respect. You know, Steve, a lot of people might be watching today that really don't know your story. And I know we've, we've got to stay on schedule here, but Steve had a life-threatening experience years ago. I mean, he, he basically was, well, you, you, you tell them, please. Okay, keep me on time, if you would. Um, basically, uh, 15 years ago, I was given uh, three months to live. Uh, what had happened was, uh, and I thought of this today, I came down with a virus and they didn't know what it was. And somehow that virus went to my heart and it started eating around the outside of my heart. And for a year and a half, but they didn't know it at that. And so for a year and a half, I kept getting worse and sick and my body was shutting down. My organs were shutting down. They didn't know what it was. And out of the blue, an autopsy uh, came from uh, one of the top clinics around the world and it found out what it was. And it was one of those good news, bad news. Uh, we think we can save you, but it's probably a 70% chance you won't make it. But I, I just took the chance. And as I said, I remember kissing my kids goodbye and, and the wheel into me in. Uh, but it wound up, uh, I survived it. And going through that year of dying, uh, facing death, uh, as uh, Marcus Aurelius talks about. I think when we face death, we also face life because we learn so much because right now I am so happy for everything. Every morning I get up, I'm so happy. I mean, I see the littlest thing that I'm happy in, and I wasn't quite that way before. So the fear of death, which we're all going through now, can be reversed and can be something so powerful for us. So we appreciate everything. I'll just share one thing. Our, our oldest dog is dying. And every night we take her down uh, from the family room upstairs and she sleeps downstairs. She wanders, she's got dementia. But every time I carry her and hold her, I think this could be 
this could be the last time. And that sounds morbid, but it makes me appreciate her for every minute. So while we're going through this fear, we need to realize that how precious life is. And I hope that awakes people. It wakes people up to how precious and how a miracle each day this life is. Wow, that's so beautifully said, Steve. Thank you so much. And, you know, I knew you really well at that during that period. We were seeing each other most every day. And I just remember being so scared for you myself. So I'm so glad everything has worked out. You're here, yeah. you're going strong, and it's inspired you to launch all these new things to help with animals, the Meals for Meals for Pets and Green Pets America, and now Seeding Greatness Foundation and all kinds of things, and the TEDx. So it's wonderful. Yeah. Well, with that, let's bring on another wonderful person, one of our speakers for TEDx Dupree Park. And this is one of those people that for so many people, we we said, well, we want this person to because he, he or she is going to talk about this specific thing. And with our first guest today, there's so many things that he could have spoken about and so many things that were interesting about him to us that I know is go are going to be very interesting to you guys as well. We're going to bring him on and let him share with you some of the things that we are all mutually passionate about. So with that, Tom Eddington, welcome to TEDx Dupree Park TV today. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Steve. Great to be with you. Good. Well, could you start us off just by telling uh, uh, our audience a little bit about you? Sure, and it's uh, it's. I'm going to build off of what Steve just shared. I had a, uh, a life-threatening illness uh, about almost uh, 20 years ago now, and I can't believe I'm still alive. I can't believe I'm still um, able to to be in the world. But um, through my my journey of, uh, and it was only years later I discovered that 95% of the people who were suffering from what I suffered from didn't make it. Um, I got back on my feet about 12 years ago after being bedridden for four years and attached to an IV pole and dedicated the rest of my life to making the world a better place. So I have uh, just been inspired by what's needed, what's possible, and, and really just seeing what's, what is it within, that's within humanity that could, uh, could make the world a better place. And I, I'm just focusing my efforts professionally on trying to bring more conscious leadership into the world through um, my podcasting TV network called Impact Effect Network and the coaching and, and consulting and speaking and writing work that I do is around bringing more conscious leadership into the world. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. So your business expertise is amazing and inspiring. And I know Steve and I are very interested in a couple of other things that you're working on. Steve, did you want to ask him about, about some of those? Yeah. Um, you know, our theme is seeding greatness and it's a metaphor. It, TEDx is about new ideas. Uh, so ours is actually a metaphor for new ideas, but it's actually, for instance, like we're going to be planning, giving out 200 dogwood trees that'll be planted. And uh, yesterday, uh, the botanist that's uh, has come on our team, uh, he came over and he's uh, helping me plant a pollinator garden to bring in, bring back the bees and uh, the uh, monarch butterflies and all that. He shared with me, even the even our local farmers here have to import bees. They have to mm. have a company bring bees in and let them sit there because we don't even have them anymore. It's affecting everything. And you yep. don't hear that on the news. So yep. tell us about you're doing some things in that area, which I really love and, and, and just commend you so much for. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so about a dozen years ago or 10 years ago, I uh, got connected with an organization in Belgium called We Forest, which was focused on reforesting the earth. And through my years of working with them, I, I saw that with regard to climate change, um, trees were the best solution for climate change. There's 300 gigatons of excess CO2 in the atmosphere, and we're, we're putting out about an extra 10 or 15 billion or, uh, yeah, 10 or 15 billion uh, tons of, of CO2 into the atmosphere. And 
trees are one of the best solutions for dealing with uh, with climate change. So I made a, a commitment to try and uh, get get more trees planted. And three years ago, a couple of colleagues and I created an organization called Verdant World. And through Verdant World, we've made a commitment to get 175 billion trees planted by the end of this decade and preserving and protecting 350 million hectares of old growth forest. So um, that's part of what we're up to, but part of what we're also trying to do is shift humans' relationship with nature and shift um, our focus as a species on planting trees rather than cutting trees down. So before humans were on the planet, there were 6 trillion trees on the planet. Um, we reduced the number to, to um, three, 3 trillion now. And we need to add another trillion trees for the planet to continue to sustain human life. And so our, our near-term goal is to get, as I said, 175 billion trees planted this decade and ultimately get a trillion trees planted. And the, the 175 billion works out to about 26 trees for every human on the planet. So my message, my goal is to get as many people as possible to plant those 26 trees. And so for me, whenever um, somebody's having a birthday, I'll plant 100 trees in their name. Uh, if somebody's having some kind of special event, I'll encourage uh, others to, to plant trees rather than giving gifts. And so I wrote a book last year, an ebook around conscious leadership. And for anybody who downloads the book, I plant a tree in their name. So I just recently planted uh, 1,500 trees in Tanzania as a, uh, as a thank you for the people who downloaded the ebook. And anybody who wants to download the ebook can do that from my website, Eddington Advisory Services uh, .com, and I will plant a tree in their name. Oh. Steve, it might be a good time to tell them about what we're doing with uh, our trees up for TEDx Dupree Park. Yeah, uh, as I said, uh, he's donated for each person coming in uh, over 200. And they're about five foot tall. They're seedlings. We planted three yesterday. Um, and so we want everybody to go back and take that with them in their goodie bag. It's <laughs> I don't think there's ever been a goodie bag in a TED with a tree in it. It's actually they're going to have to put it in the trunk. I mean, it, that's a hell of a goodie bag. But there's other things in it. But we want it to stand out. We, you know... You know, the thing with the metaphor and, you know, you're a cerebral thinker, and you're, but you're also down to earth, too. <laughs> Pardon the pun, but <laughs> we, we have to do things. You know, it's fun, you know, to talk about things, but we have to do them. And, and what is, you know, what is the most pressing thing we can do? And that's it. Plant trees. So we want our whole community to be planting trees. What better than the city of Woodstock? Yep. You know, to be planting trees. And it's the same thing with us. We're going to be giving them as gifts. And it creates awareness what you're doing. It's like the Susan Kamenin Fund. I mean, you know, we know that because of the running. You have to do something tangible. And so I really commend you for what you're doing. That's that's brilliant. Wonderful. I know. What, what big thinking of trillion yeah. trees. That's just amazing. I love it. Uh, well, I know we need to get on to our next guest soon, but I would, I can't let you leave here, Tom, without telling us a little bit about what you're doing with endangered species. Uh, Steve and I, another thing that brought us together over the years, we're both big animal lovers. I mean, big animal lovers. We spend an enormous amount of time, money, and effort helping animals. So what are you doing to help uh, endangered species? Sure. So, you know, we, we can plant the trillion trees and deal with climate change, but if we've lost biodiversity, if, we, if we've lost species on the planet, then we failed. We failed miserably. Who wants to live on a planet where there are no other animals? And, and we can't survive without pollinators like bumblebees and, and bees in general and hummingbirds and butterflies and all of the, the species that help make it possible for food to grow. So I, I own an art gallery here in Taos, New Mexico, and one of the artists that, uh, that we represent and is my business partner, Kimberly Weber, has been painting for years, paintings of beautiful uh, scenes in nature of, uh, of uh, various animals, keystone species in particular, rhinos and giraffes and, and other species. 
And so what we're, we're doing through the gallery and through our campaign, um, through the, the gallery untitled editions, we are um, creating a dedicated edition of 18 different images of her work. And we're selling the, the prints, the dedicated editions, these are museum quality prints, through our nonprofit partners. And we've got 12, currently 12 nonprofit partners that are focused on helping rhinos and giraffes and cheetahs and jaguars and other species. And 70% of the sale of the print goes to support the work of the, um, the nonprofits that are working on preserving the ecosystems and the endangered species. So in total, the campaign will raise just over $28 million in funding for the nonprofits who are our partners in the work they're doing around preserving, protecting ecosystems and endangered species. It's a beautiful way for people to have incredible art and to support the, the work being done by these nonprofits. And it's just a, a wonderful way to connect people back with nature, to raise awareness around what's happening on the planet, because we've, we've lost about 60% of all known species since the 1970s on the planet. And we have to stop that trend. We have to preserve and protect as much nature as we can. Mm, absolutely. Wow. Well, Tom, thank you so much. And we're sad that you weren't on the actual TEDx stage today, but you're on the TEDx global stage, the TEDx yes. Park global <laughs> stage. So thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And we will be seeing you around the globe, I'm sure. Yes, thank you, Beth. Thank you. Take care. All right, Steve, how inspiring is that? Yeah, boy, that's a great one to start. What, you know, he, he came back from what his issue was and, and rebooted himself and look what he's done. I mean, he's just, I, I'm in awe of all the speakers we have. I really am. I just feel uh, we've got quite a, quite a group here of people and all the same thing, animals, environment, bettering ourselves, thinking better, things like that. Mm, yes, absolutely. Well, I do want to take just a quick second here to tell everybody that it's real easy to find out more about TEDx Dupree Park, our speakers, our sponsors, and everything that's going on, our new date of November 20th. That's the plan. Uh, and if you, we are totally community and volunteer supported. So if you want to donate, you can just click the donate button right up here and it's going to take you down so that you can find out more about TEDx Dupree Park. You can click the donate button and uh, yes, it will take you to the donate button. Hmm, well, all right. Yeah, it did. I just didn't notice it right there. PayPal. And you can contribute whatever amount that you would like. If you want to contribute $10, that's great. That would help us. If you want to contribute a thousand or more, you'd be recognized as one of our sponsors. And we would greatly appreciate that as well. So we have a lot of wonderful sponsors. You'll be meeting one of them later today. And right now you're going to meet one of our wonderful coaches. And so let me just take a look here. So as you see the TEDx speakers and then our store, and then down below, you can see our different coaches and team members. And right now, we're going to be meeting the lovely Miss Cricket Harrison, who is an in real life friend of mine from Atlanta, Georgia. And she stepped right up and volunteered to coach one of our speakers. So Cricket, come on board. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Oh, I love that background. That's, that's Thank so you. lovely. Thank mm. you. Well, Cricket, what is it? Tell us a little bit about you and what you do. Well, for the past probably, gosh, I hate to date myself. For the past number of years, I have been working really in the entrepreneurial market, helping entrepreneurs hone their message and learn how to use speaking to grow their business, whether it be in a networking environment, on a stage, or at a trade show booth. Okay. All right. Very good. And uh, you so speakers and entrepreneurs and different people as far as communicating. Yes. As far as communication, mostly around speaking and messaging, teaching people, everybody focuses on their marketing message. And I try to help them learn how to also focus on their spoken message. Cause I tell everyone and my introverts are just the same is that everyone speaks and everyone has a platform, but everyone's not using the same stage. So all our speakers here for this, they have a platform. Right. And so I help them bring that message out and learn how to speak in a concise way so that they are referable and heard and understood. 
Exactly. Well, Crick, I know you are working with at least one of our speakers. I think we've spoke with you possibly about working with others, but tell us a little bit about one of the, the speaker that you're working with. I, it's so funny. I am working with Dr. Michael Good, who is a veterinarian, an amazing veterinarian. And I can say that because he was our family veterinarian. I don't know how many years ago. And the best part about this is we didn't know that when we were matched up, you know, he's afraid he knows Stephen well. And uh, they said, you know, who can work with Michael? And I'm like, wait, I recognize that name. And he actually helped us rescue a dog from a family where the dog was not being treated well. And so it's just like things coming full circle now. We, you know, had all our labs. He took care of all our labs. And so it was fantastic to get to see him as both my vet, how he practices and runs his practice and works and his compassion but also to see now how he's come around and created his nonprofit and the work he's doing. I don't think the man sleeps. I mean, I really don't, uh, uh, but to see the work, right. To see the work he's doing to stop euthanasia and to use animals and pets, dogs and cats to actually teach empathy and help prevent bullying. Like there's so much to his work that we were actually, it was, it was a struggle to come up with what's his one big idea because it's one huge idea that has three big ideas underneath it. Mm. Steve, I know you were particularly excited about bringing Dr. Good on board. Please share just a little bit about your thoughts and why you were so passionate about bringing Dr. Good on board as one of our speakers for TEDx yeah. Dupree Park. When I was actually hands-on doing animal rescue and pick up death row dogs. He, he was a legend in this area. People really knew him. He, uh, he has an amazing, he's, he's bigger than life. You know that. Yes. I mean, when we go to the uh, Marietta diner with him, he knows everybody. <laughs> he's like the godfather to come into the table. He's buying food for his workers, for the people at his shelter as he's leaving. Uh, but he saved over 20 thousand dogs there's very few vets that are really in rescue you know they're either one or the other and he his whole thing is is about saving dogs Absolutely. but he he he's created these pet clubs he's got 600 thousands of kids involved in after school teaching them about caring for pets loving animals and it's 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 given them confidence in themselves it's allowing them to love somebody, especially inner schools where they never mm -hmm. had the opportunity to love the animal. So he's, he's, you know, like Tom, he's touching on so many things and he is 24 seven. I mean, Absolutely. I have a hard time getting a hold of him. <laughs> we all do. Does, you know, it's 10 o'clock, he's in surgery. And then he volunteers at uh, the Atlanta shelter. He's their director there. Now he's the director for the state of the Humane Society. He's just got so much on his plate. Uh, so I, mean, I wanted uh, one of the best coaches. If you know. we all had a heart that big, think what, what the world would be like. Ooh, you know? Wow. Ooh, I that mean, just gives me chills. Yeah, somebody doesn't it? I somebody mean, type just, that in the comments. I want to feature that. that that's, cool. that's, and it's so funny because, you know, we're raised with respect. And, and so for me, he will always be Dr. Good. And when I call on, they're like, you know, they're like Michael and, or Mike or whatever. And I'm like, no, he's Dr. Good. Like, uh, <laughs> but, but it is such an amazing experience to feel like, even though I did not know him well, I have known him for 30 some odd years or however long he's been in his location. And I remember him from that long ago, how he was with his practice. And he's just uh, like, like it, it has, personality and his heart have grown and gotten bigger and deeper. And I, just when you think that he can't give any more, like Stephen mentions, he gives more. And I don't know what he's doing, but if he doesn't need sleep, I'd like to know about it. <laughs> he's bought houses for people. He has oh, he's just amazing. Houses. Uh, he lives very modestly. Mm -hmm. uh, very modestly. Well, he's he, never at his house. Yeah. <laughs> and he gives back. I think everything he has goes back to helping people yeah. or helping the animals. Absolutely. One That's thing we are doing, I've been working with him with a Hollywood producer that uh, came along into our life because of this. Uh, because we want to do a Netflix series for him. So I hope that's working. I haven't talked to him in about a month, but I hope something like that works. He wanted me to do a book and I, I couldn't do a book, but I thought, and he wants to do a movie. So, you know, 
this is connected so many people like you said it's a circle full circles coming back yeah. yep absolutely well cricket tell us a little bit about what you're excited about today what what's going on with you your business your life what, what's got you really energized right now you know this has been really an amazing time i mean i think we all know that but even more so because the more we get centered around what's important the more people are feeling like they have a voice and want to be heard. And that's part of what I love about this forum and format is I get to meet these amazing people with these ideas who have a voice and want to be heard. So I've actually just had a lot of fun helping people in that in that area, helping them you know, change their message. What is the message that, that they've really wanted to get out? And they know that now's the time. I mean, we all know things are changed and we've got whatever our new next is. And so for me, that's been a lot of fun working with speakers to help hone their message, working with all my entrepreneurs. I mean, just like our, our speakers with fabulous ideas, we get exposed to people that have amazing inventions, that have made amazing things based on you know experiences they've been through. I've worked with uh, a, a woman who had breast cancer who came out and redesigned what the bra should look like for a breast cancer woman. And just to see that, that mind at work and then help them articulate that that's been really fun for me. And I think now more than ever, people want their voice to be heard. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for all well, you've been doing. I, I know you've been giving uh, Steve some suggestions for some mm -hmm. things that he's doing when, when he was on stage and, and all and many of us behind the scenes. So thank you so much. You're Cricket, very we welcome. really appreciate you. And is there anything you'd like to share as, as you leave? How can we get in touch with you? We've shared your link below. Is that a good place? Well, that's actually not my current link. That's okay. And that was my fault. I missed that in the in the promo. I've actually been teaching or in seminars most of the week. So the easiest way to get in touch with me is actually through Facebook and my Facebook group. And it's a real quick, it's an, a bit.ly link. I made it really easy. And it's just bit.ly forward slash cricket with a K, crickets group. No apostrophe, really simple. And uh, my company is Smart Success, which I think is up on the screen, smart, smartsuccessinc.com. Okay, wonderful. Well, that that's terrific. I'm sure we'll be pulling that up in just a few minutes. And Marcy Walsh, our wonderful producer for today's TV show, is in the in the scenes that behind the scenes there, and I'm sure she'll be adding that to the comments. So, Cricket, thanks a bunch. You take care, and we will see you, you around the TEDx world. And and uh, I, I can't wait till we're all get we all get to be together. Yeah. It'll be great. Take care. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Whoops. <laughs> Moved you the wrong way. There we go. Okay. Here we go. Whoops. Steve, let me add you back to Steve. Okay. Well, it would be good if we had someone who could run the controls properly, right? This is still fairly new technology for me, but I love this platform. I love being able to share uh, these sorts of comments as they're coming in. Isn't this a cool platform, Steve? You, you are, you are so damn fast. I mean, you, your mind spins, so I'm spinning, <laughs> but you're doing all this. It's amazing what you can do. Uh, I, I, you, what, didn't you just get awarded the best host or something like that? Oh, I was, was awarded uh, Power Women Worldwide, recognized me as a certified virtual speaker, but thank you very much. I appreciate okay. you noticing that. Yes, that yeah. was quite exciting. Right. I, I think I was the very first one. Uh, she just uh, started the, the Power Women Worldwide. They just started this designation, and I think I was um, either their first or one of their first, so it's very exciting, but thank you for noticing. Right. So what's so cool is a tool like this. I mean, the tools like this make me look great, right? Because I I can feature people. We can, we're broadcasting into a Facebook group. We're broadcasting into Facebook page. We're broadcasting into uh, YouTube, I think, right now, and Periscope. And uh, John Clunan, our social media genius, is helping us there to get everything set up so that we're broadcasting in all these different places. So it's just, I love tools like this. They make everything look so good. Good. So yeah, with that, go ahead. No, I was saying it's exciting, really. And thank you, Lynn, another one of our speakers that we'll be hearing from. She'll be on our show in a few weeks, and I'm so excited about that. One of my other in real life friends who's going to be on board. Now, our next speaker is not, I haven't met him personally, but I've been online with him in ser several different settings, and I feel like I know him. And I, the first time I heard about the work he's doing, I thought, oh my gosh, I've just got to do that one day when I grow up. <laughs> that is something that I aspire to. So with that, let's bring on our next speaker, Ari Nessel. Ari, welcome. Hi, Gina. Hi, Steve. Hey, Ari. How are you? Uh, blessed. Grateful to be here with you. 
So wonderful to see you. Well, Ari, tell tell the folks in the audience a little bit about yourself, what you're doing, and and uh, what what we need to know about you. Well, first off, uh, what you're doing is what uh, feels really connecting to me, uh, and that be part of that. I I think of what you wrote as sort of the uh, guideline for how you wanted to orient uh, TEDx Dupree about a society where people plant trees that they know full well they won't sit under uh, as a way to be in relationship with the world. That's what I aspire for. So if you want to, who am I? I'm a person who wants to move from you know, direct reciprocity to indirect reciprocity to infinite reciprocity. And that's what I mean by that is uh, giving in a way that acknowledges my interdependence with everything else around me. And that, and that I feel, and having given, that feels like enough. Mm. Well, as Steve and I were talking and, and the leadership team about this, the um, theme and seeding greatness and what that meant, and I'd like Steve to chime in on that just a little bit, why he chose that as our overarching umbrella phrase. The, you were the first name that came to mind. It was like, oh my gosh, th he is so perfect for this. So Steve, why did you choose that? Uh, proverb as sort of our overall mantra. Yeah, it's it's an old, as I say, I'm Irish, but it's an old Greek saying from the ancients. And I study ancient history and, and philosophies that go back then. And th they were just a different people then. They, they thought more in holistic and uh, forward. You know, we, we think two weeks ahead, they think a uh, hundred years ahead. But it's, you know, it's the saying that societies grow great and flourish when it's elders, which it's seniors, and it should be everybody. But when it's seniors, plant trees that they, they know they'll never sit under, but they do it anyway because they're planning. They know there will be a future. And if you're like me, I know physically I won't be in the future, but I will be in the future. We're energy. We're always here. We'll always be here. It doesn't go. So it's that type of thing. You know, we're, we're, we're seeding ideas today for a better global world tomorrow. And the timing of this is just perfect because, because I think if any time, you know, Ari, people are looking for a new way to go and an opportunity to do it with this reset. So the things you're doing are just wonderful and amazing. We're so well, you're we, a top guy. We're so happy to have you on. Really, My well, we get to be co-conspirators in compassion together, right? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully, you know, like you said, you call it a reset. You call it whatever you want. There's so many ways to interpret it. And I think the way we interpret it is a greater reflection of us than it is of the world around us and of the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, we're just something funky about our species. You know, uh, we learn a lot easier through our mistakes and through our traumas and our difficulties than we do through our successes and our joys in, in a lot of ways. And sometimes things we have to, this is, you know, there's a phrase, I really, a quote I really like. It says there's two kinds of suffering, the suffering that leads to more suffering and the suffering that leads to the end of suffering. If you don't face the latter, you will surely face the former. So how do we transform any of our difficulties, our problems, our, uh, the, the, the things that, that we have to, bridges we have to cross into a way that's transformative so that we don't have to face them again? We've been through that. Mm, very, very well said. Exactly, right. Ari, I originally met you through one of our other speakers who was absolutely on the top of my list when I heard that I get to be involved in choosing speakers for the TEDx Dupree Park, uh, Colleen Patrick Goudreau who is just speaking of compassion, when I think of compassion and, and you know, I, I think of Colleen. So tell, tell me, uh, and, and through her, I learned about your pollination project. So could you tell us a little bit about your pollination project, please? Sure. Um, so the Pollination Project is, is a grant making organization uh, and we give out small grants. So we think about people who know microfinance is where they give out small loans to people. Uh, takes out like, the middleman and you give it to people as a great way to create livelihood uh, and to support their ability to, affect, to, to, to support themselves and to participate in their community. This is a, taking that idea and applying it to, to, to nonprofits or activism or, uh, or community change. And so we give small grants of $500 to $5,000 to individual volunteers who are doing something on a basis of contribution to create, uh, create more compassion in the world. And we've given out over uh, almost... 4,000 grants now in over 100 countries. 
uh, to people working on any all ranges of issues from animal rights to uh, women's rights to uh, education uh, to uh, environmental justice. Uh, you fill in the blank of what the issues are because there's so many unmet needs and there's so many different unique ways of addressing those needs. But we find that when people are directly affected by those problems and they're part of the communities that are being affected, they're uniquely positioned to address those problems. Mm, gosh, I just love that. I, I I have trouble focusing on it on a topic. My my main one has been animals. I. I think, you know, the voice for the voiceless. I really have been passionate about helping homeless animals for many, many years now, many decades, actually. But I really love that that your pollination project has in, has enabled you in a very significant way, money to and, and exposure to help these different entities, these different causes that are so important to you and to your board. You, ha you have a whole board that makes these decisions. Is that right? Well, actually, our grant making decisions are made by our grantees. Uh, so our people who, are, who, are, who have completed their grants evaluate grant applications and choose which of those receive grants. So it's a way of constantly paying it forward. So the tree that they sat under, to use Steve, uh, Steve's analogy, is they're paying for some muscles under the shade from that tree and, vice, and then the next person. Uh, and everyone's benefiting in as, as this pay it forward model. And so we're trying to take financial capital and, and transform it into its much more valuable forms of, of, of contribution, which is human capital, time capital, knowledge capital, community capital, compassion capital, spiritual capital. Exciting, exciting. Well, what else has you exciting right now? Are, are you have so many different projects that you're working on. That's just one of the projects that you have that's, that I am really passionate about and want to bring to the world. But what, what else is going on with you that you're excited about and want to share with the world? Yeah, I, I'm excited uh, about sharing mindfulness and sharing ways for people to take this space where we're in this, uh, um, this moment of where we left a previous way of being and moving to a new way of being that we don't need, know yet what it is. Uh, some people call this a liminal space, that sort of yeah. the, where you're in the space of unknown. And so people are more receptive to what, it, what could be. And I find mindfulness uh, as a way for people to build Instead of relying on the external world for their well-being, uh, instead working from the inside out. And I see a lot of people are more questioning old paradigms where they think happiness is getting what you want or not getting what you don't want. Uh, so we're, like for instance, next week we're hosting a meditation retreat for animal advocates. Uh, we're doing it virtually. Uh, I'm part of a retreat center where we're going to host it at. But we can do a lot more, host a lot more people than we would have otherwise. And so we've got around 65 people signed up to go for, spend four days in silence uh, in their homes, uh, practicing meditation with some guidance and hearing some talks about how to uh, transform their relationships to themselves and the world around them. And that brings me a lot of joy. That's a, that's a very exciting. Steve, you meditate a lot, right? Yeah, I do each morning. Um, uh, it just sets my day. I mean, you, you have to do it. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, it just, it just round, it, it just grounds us. I mean, you know, um, all the, all the concerns we have are, and I, you know, I'm more creative when I do that. My best ideas come after my meditation and, and just sitting, I have a certain place where I sit, a certain chair, certain way of doing, it. I'm not a person with a habit, but I do follow that habit. So Ari, I know you've spent a lot of time recently, even in in India and other countries. It's just a way of life for people there, right? Is it, isn't it strange that that in the United States and maybe I don't know much of the West that that it's just it's not taught. It's not something that's a way of life for us, right? Well, I am not familiar with any place that's a way of life. Um, it's a practice, uh, and it, there are some cultures that it's more prevalent in, but I. Uh, you know, you go to certain, uh, you know, more Buddhist countries and it's more common, but still those countries, it's, it, it, even meditation is, is rarely practiced. Uh, it's, I would say if anywhere it's becoming more and more practiced, it's probably the United States, if you can believe it right now. We've adopted, we've taken on practices that were originated in India uh, and the East and taken on here as our own, just like yoga is, actually has become back to life um, through the United States. 
So it is actually becoming, um, you know, it's, 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 it's flourishing and people are seeing how um, the, this sort of this, this dream I said of getting of, of what we think is going to bring us happiness, the emptiness of that dream and how, you know, as it's all, as the proverb says that happiness is, as happiness is really an inside job and that, but how do we break away from old pat, thought patterns and habits that were standing in the way of our well-being. I heard something, you, you were talking to someone a little while ago, Steve, the previous person about something about, you know, cultivation of love. And I love, I was thinking of this, this poem from Rumi uh, that came to mind. He said that uh, our job is not to seek for love. Our job is to remove all the barriers that inhibit it. And so meditation is sort of moving. It, it's not, you don't have to, we don't have to cultivate these qualities, a lot of these beautiful qualities you're speaking about. They exist. They're they're innate to us. Right. We just have to remove those things that get in the way. Yeah, it's like when we're on our search, we think it's out there, and then twenty years later, we realize, oh, it's right here. It was here. I didn't have to find it. I just had to wake up to it. Indeed. And so that's you're on the path. You're a young man. You're on the path. Good. Well, excellent. Well, thank you so much, Ari. We really appreciate you taking time away from all the amazing things you're doing in the world to join us, to get your word out and the activities that you're doing out into the world in a bigger way still through TEDx Dupree Park. And we're going to be sharing this all over and trying to get the word out about what you're doing. And so glad that you're here and that you'll be on our stage on November 20th in Woodstock, Georgia. Grateful for all the ways you're pulling people together and, and amplifying the good in the world. Thank you, Ari. Take care. Take care. All righty. Well, of course, we could not be running TEDx Dupree Park without what makes the world go around money. Money's important. We have a beautiful venue with amazing high tech equipment so that we'll have beautiful v videos for our speakers once they've been on our stage. A big part of being a part of a TEDx is that you get a great YouTube video that's going to go into the TEDx world and hopefully get millions of views. And so we're doing our, our event at mad life and all that equipment all that video the food to feed people all that it's not it's not cheap is it steve no it's not and you know there's a non-profit uh so far we've uh, got our own money in this so we're just trying to recoup uh that back so that we could do uh, even a better one the following year this is something we plan on doing the world needs a stage and we want to be the the ones that build would we'll just be the carpenters that built that stage or others. Exactly. Well, one of the people who is helping us bring more sponsors on board, and you guys, it's easy to be a sponsor. Just go to TEDxDupreePark.com and you can look around. We have sponsor opportunities all over. But one of our volunteers who has stepped forward and has making a big impact in bringing sponsors on board is Bhavna, Bhavna Muta. Thank you so much for joining us, Bhavna. Oh, we're not hearing you. You're muted. Here we go. Try again. Uh, so there you go. Do you hear me now? We can. Yeah. Okay. So I'm so happy to be here again um, and happy to be a part of this team. So today I get a chance to introduce one of our sponsors. I'm going to introduce her saying, uh, mentioning beauty, brain, and soul. The reason I say that is, um, you know, a lot of people have talent, you know, are professional, but it needs a heart to get up and go ahead and put in the resources. Um, the good part of, of this is I had actually approached uh, Shilpa's mentor, which is Neera Bahal, who's another attorney, and she referenced me to Shilpa. And Shilpa did not have a second thought, not a second thought. She just came on board. Um, so to introduce Shilpa, um, she is originally from New Jersey and she's gotten her degree in law from Atlanta uh, John Marshall's Law School. Uh, she also has um, a recipient of Kelly Excellence Award. And other than that, this is her day job um, on her week. She is a vibrant Bollywood choreographer and a dancer. She's done um, workshops with uh, quite a bunch of Bollywood celebrities. And that's how we have had um, bumped into each other on some of the weekends. Um, so that's amazing to have somebody who is beauty, brain, and soul. Um, and also recently, Shilpa has been streaming some uh, classes and choreography on our Facebook page. 
So once I return the mic on to Shilpa, it's our turn to hear all the good things she's involved in. So here and we here, go. And here she is. Welcome, Shilpa. How you doing? Hi, Gina. Hi, Steve and Bob, Hi, everyone that's watching. Thanks so much for having me. Well, thank you so much for supporting TEDx Dupree Park. And Bobna, thank you so much for bringing her into our world. I remember meeting you at our in-person event that we had, our our launch party for TEDx Dupree Park at Mad Life back in February before all this craziness. Yes, came ma'am. Out. Last was, time we could all see each other together, huh? <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, I would love to know, well, tell us a little bit more about your business. And Bobna, I love that introduction, Beauty, Brains, and Soul. Ooh, that's just... And that's thank you so much. Um, you're too kind, Bobna. Um, <laughs> but and so I'm Shilpa Jadwani, and I am the owner and managing attorney at One Path Legal. Uh, we are a law firm that specializes in immigration, family, and business law, um, business law and family law in the state of Georgia and immigration law, um, United States immigration law all over the world. Um, but what I absolutely love about TEDx and why I wanted to get involved with TEDx Dupree, um, as soon as Pavna brought the idea to me, um, was because of what it stands for, community, um, you know, togetherness, the innovation, creativity, and, you know, despite what many must think, um, us lawyers, too, have a fun and creative side um, that Pavna was talking about. So I also work um, with a dance studio here in Georgia, Prime Dance Studio, and um, we provide Bollywood uh, dance lessons and classes and, um, you know, performances um, all over the world. But uh, what we have been doing so far, we all know um, how COVID has taken a toll and how we're all locked in and everyone's struggling and going through a, a hard time. Um, but with that being said, we're all about giving back. Um, in addition to being a part of the TEDx community, we're trying to do our part um, on the legal end. We are providing pro bono uh, free legal services to families that need it during these tough times. Um, and of course, like Bhavna mentioned, um, on the creative side, uh, I've been doing through the studio uh, free Facebook online dance classes. And at the end of every class, I ask uh, everyone to donate to a, a particular charity. Uh, our last session, we want we asked everyone to donate to Ruksha, which is a nonprofit organization um, that helps domestic violence victims. And uh, they're a wonderful cause, but um, I'm always looking for causes and to, you know, give back and to encourage everyone else to do the same, just like you guys are. And it's just such a pleasure to be a part of this team and see everything that you're doing. And um, I'm really thankful to my mentor, Nira Ball, um, for introducing me to Pop and bringing me into this. And just a little quick shout out because it is Miss Ball's birthday today. So happy birthday, Miss Nira. Oh, fantastic. Yep. Well, you shared a couple things, uh, dan online dance lessons, is this open to the public? Yes, ma'am, open to everybody, they are public. It's a great way, you know, we're all um, stuck indoors, uh, quarantining, uh, we're working a lot, we are, um, you know, eating a lot <laughs> and having fun with that, uh, I know I am. But uh, with that, we have to stay healthy and stay fit and take care of ourselves. So the classes are online on Facebook. They're free. Um, I do them every two weeks um, online and they go from beginners to just have fun with it. You know, the, you know what I love about Facebook Live and doing these classes is that you guys can see me as I'm teaching, but no one can see you. So it, you know, sheds a little bit of that inhibition and that shyness um, because you can just be standing in your living room and having fun. <laughs> Oh, terrific. Well, tell us the exact Facebook page, facebook.com slash. Yes, absolutely. It's Prem Dance Studio. Um, and you guys can, that's P-R-E-M-D-A-N-C-E Studio. Um, and we're located, headquartered in Norcross, Georgia at the Global Mall. Um, and actually, slowly as, you know, uh, we know that everything's opening back up and we're still encouraging our students for now to be safe and stay indoors and not resuming in-person classes at the moment. So it's a great way to get our community involved and just blow off some steam and give back at the same time. Excellent, very good. Well, you mentioned the domestic violence. I didn't know that you were doing that work. I've heard that, and I and I imagine, I mean, it's, it has to be true. Fortunately, I'm 
cooped up with someone that I adore and who's just perfectly wonderful. But I can't imagine all this lockdown and being with someone that you don't enjoy being with or even worse, someone who is abusive physically or or um, mentally towards you, emotionally towards you. That it's just you must be helping a lot of people that are really in a tough time right now. Whoops, we lost Shilpa. Well, what a beautiful, appropriate comment to be beneath us right now from one of our other big community supporters, Colleen Ke Kelly Blackwell, talking about beautiful hearts. Shilpa's connection must have just dropped out, which happens sometimes, or maybe I pressed the wrong button and zapped her. I don't know, I don't think so. But <laughs> you know, uh, Gina, me and Shilpa were talking about um, developing something called a Bollywood code. And so we're going to teach our TEDx team something called Bale Bale. Bale Bale is, you know, that comes from Bale Bale girl. So Bale Bale, I'm back. Sorry, guys. <laughs> embarrassing with that unstable internet connection at my house. <laughs> oh, no worries. So Things our, happen. I was worried that I had hit the wrong button. But that sounds really cool, Bob. No, yes. So all we go Bale Bale, Shilpa. Yes, ma'am. So I was talking about, um, and I'm sorry, I, I think, uh, Gina, I missed your question when we were talking about domestic violence victims and Raksha. Um, but just so, so we, with uh, our immigration work, uh, do all types of immigration from family-based to employment-based to victim-based. Um, and the part of that that I'm most passionate about is the victim base. There are a lot of options for victims. Um, and we know that, you know, there are a lot of different types of victims out there. And unfortunately, we are seeing from statistics and uh, studies right now that while everyone is stuck at home and quarantined at home, a lot of people are also, um, you know, while we're all enjoying our family time and having uh, wonderful you know, memories with our family, it's not the same for everybody. And some people are actually um, on, in lockdown and quarantine with their abusers. Um, and so this is a very important time for us as a community to bind together and see what we can do to help these people that are, um, you know, sometimes you may not even know, but such integral parts of your community, your neighbor, your friend, your relative, you know, your coworker. So please reach out, you know, for whatever you can do. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Shilpa, for your support of TEDx Dupree Park, for all the things you're doing with your law practice and all the th other things that you're doing in the community. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you around the internet and in thank real you. life. <laughs> yes, I'm possible. looking forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, just before you jump off okay. for a second, let me give you the name of a nonprofit that you may want to support. It's called Ahimsa House, A-H-I-M-S-A. -S and the reason I love it and support them ourselves, uh, men who abuse women will start small and they will start intimidating them. And one thing they do is they will threaten their dog and they'll threaten to kill the dog and they will kill the dog. And I know this because of our animal welfare. And so if they don't kill the dog, they will keep threatening. And the women will want to leave, but they can't because a lot of the houses, halfway houses, won't take animals. But a Himsa house does that. It takes care of the animal so the woman can get out. So it's 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 a wonderful nonprofit and something I'd absolutely do. love to Steve. And you know what? Why don't I make them my uh, next nonprofit for my next session? That would be a good one. A Himsa House. They're right here in Atlanta. That's great. Well, I'm been... looking forward to it. Thank you. Good. Okay, great. Thank you so much. All righty. Well, let's bring on our uh, that that that's fantastic, Steve. I've I've supported and um, known about Ahimsa House and the great work they're doing there in Atlanta for many years too. So, let's bring on our co-organizer, Mike Cena. Let's see, Mike. I'm pressing the wrong buttons here. Here we go, Mike. Thanks for joining us. Here How I you am. doing? I'm doing great, and it's uh, what an awesome show once again. The the energy and the messages and so much good stuff. I'm. I'm taking notes as uh, as Tom and Steve and Bobna uh, and Shilpa are talking in um, good stuff. Well, thank you so much. Well, well, Mike, uh, as you've been listening today, what are the, 
And and as you were also so integrally involved in choosing the May 15th date and moving this forward, yeah. how did you feel this morning when, when you got up and you're like, oh man, I, I, that's kind of the way I was like, oh man, I wish it was happening, but I'm, I'm grateful for everything that has happened instead. Well, I got to tell you, you know, this, uh, what we're doing right now, the Facebook TV, Steve summed it up perfectly in that uh, life goes on, we will go on, we continue. If it's not COVID-19, in many cases, there'll be something else. And so much of how we respond to life is what's in our hearts. Uh, it is all on the inside. I got to say one thing, I know we're a little short, but one thing I, I, I just want to proclaim, I was in downtown Woodstock. This whole thing started with me with the city of Woodstock and the, the wonderful energy and the vibe that goes on down there. And for the first time in six weeks, Chambers Street, which is the main street just east of Main Street, not a single parking space was available. People were out. People were mixing. Uh, about half the folks had masks on. There was a, a whole slew of um, high school seniors and their cap and gowns. It was just it was terrific to see the energy, to see people out and about. I'm so thrilled that uh, we're still continuing. November 20th, Mad Life uh, Stage and Studios. We're absolutely going to blow the doors off of Woodstock in November. Well, what a special community Woodstock, Georgia is. I lived there for so many years and was involved in the downtown planning committee back decades ago, literally yeah. when when they when we couldn't imagine the beauty and the the excitement and the entertainment and the dining options and all the things that are going on there now. It's just yeah. so wonderful. It's uh, uh, it's a terrific terrific place, and uh, for me again personally, tap into that energy and. TEDx Dupree Park is a way to help showcase Woodstock, Cherokee County to the world. I think we live in a uh, just a wonderful place. Well, with that, thank you so much, Mike, for being co-organizer and helping move things along. Thank you so much, Bobna, for reaching out into the community, to yes. our sponsors, and to helping bring people into our world and, and let people know about the opportunity to support TEDx Dupree Park as a sponsor. As a sponsor, you get recognition on our website, and certainly you get to come into our shows and, and say hello and tell us yeah. about what you're doing. And because we're doing these shows now that are going all over the world, you know, you do not have to be a sponsor with a business in Woodstock, Georgia. You can be a sponsor around the world and you just want to reach a community that is that the TEDx Dupree Park is reaching and or you just really believe in this mission that we have of seeding greatness throughout the world planting trees under which we know we'll never sit under and helping people and helping get these great big ideas out into the world to make the world a better place with that Steve let me call on you do you have some final words for us today just enjoy the day Enjoy the day. Oh, really? I mean, that's that's what it's about. Enjoying the day. Enjoy the moment. Seize the moment. There you go. Seize the moment. Seize the day. Thank you, Colleen. Yes, 11 20, 20 Exactly. November 20th, uh, 2020 is the big day. You can find out more about us. Oh, Sponsors Rule. Oh, I thought I was clicking this one. <laughs> but Sponsors Rule is a good one, too. Thank you so much. Whoever put that in there. I think it was probably Marcy. All right. And thank you, Marcy. I want to say thank you so much to Marcy Walsh for being our our uh, producer today and last week. She was so helpful to us. So we're going to be doing these. The plan is every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. So join us. And Randy Stooks, our speaker manager, has been doing a fabulous job of getting everyone scheduled. And Bob is reaching out to our sp sponsors to get them on board. So we're just going to continue doing this. And as I mentioned, we will be working in some people that aren't officially part of our speaker schedule for November 20th, but they were tops on our list of people to bring in and global experts of people that might be appropriate to chat with you about things that we think are important. So people who are in Woodstock, people who are around the world, that's the beauty of doing TEDx Dupree Park TV is that we can talk with people all around the world and, and get their ideas and share those with you. So with that, Let's sign off on today's edition of TEDx Dupree Park TV. Thank you so much for joining us. And please click the share button, click the like, put some comments in there and get this, help us get this word out around the world. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.